Thank you for watching the American Numismatic Society's YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you like our online resources, publication, and events, you can support the Society by becoming a member. And don't forget to check out our book and eBay stores. The links are below. Now this road, oh, receive her now, we pray. Consume her as would a furnace. Burn on, oh, ancient road. Burn on! Burn on! Hello, everybody. I'm Dr. Lucia Carbone, curator of Roman coins at the American Numismatic Society. Today, we will be talking about a scarce and highly sought after bronze coin of Nero, the famed Ostia Sestertius. The Sesterci, made out of brass, are considered the most beautiful Roman imperial coins because their size allowed detailed depictions. Nero's ones, and the Ostia Sestertius in particular, represent the artistic apex of imperial Sesterci. Let's begin with some words about Nero, the emperor who issued this coin in AD 64. One of the most iconic Roman emperors, he ascended to the throne in AD 54, when he was just 17 years old. He committed suicide in AD 68, after an army rebellion broke out in France and Spain, soon followed by the defection of the Praetorian Guard, the Imperial Bodyguard, apparently bribed by hostile senators. He has been considered responsible for the murder of his own mother, Agrippina II, an influential figure in the first years of his reign. He also allegedly hated his adoptive father, the Emperor Claudius, in spite of the fact he made Claudius a god right after his death. Nero would have also caused the death of his wife, Poppea Sabina. Even more notoriously, he has been traditionally portrayed as the emperor who fiddled while Rome burned. This anecdote alludes to the great fire of Rome in AD 64, for which some ancient sources blame Nero as he wanted space to build his own palatial domus area or golden house. Nero, however, was perhaps not so bad. And the coin I'm presenting today could help shedding light on some aspects of Nero's reign. On the obverse, this coin shows a highly realistic portrait of the Emperor Nero, with the legend Nero, Claudius, Caesar, Augustus, Germanicus, Pontifex Maximus, Tribunicia Potestas, Imperator, and Pater Patria, all imperial titles. On the reverse, there is a depiction of a harbor with the legend Augusti Por, Ost, S, C, the imperial harbor of Ostia by decree of the Senate, split between the top and bottom of the image. The harbor is represented by breakwaters on the right and pillars of a portico on the left, which symmetrically match each other. Between the portico and breakwaters at the bottom of the image is a large reclining male figure holding a rudder and leaning on a dolphin. At the top is the lighthouse built by the Emperor Claudius. On this lighthouse stands a smaller male statue. Within the circle of the harbor rest various boats, which, although the exact arrangement and number vary among different dice, always include a large merchant ship in the center. But which harbor is represented on this coin? Ostia, the first harbor of Rome, was essentially a river port, unable to accommodate large merchant ships. 
This is why Julius Caesar, the famous dictator, recognized the necessity of building a larger harbor. He chose as a location for the future large harbor an area a few miles north of Rome, where now the small town of Porto is. Over one century later, it was Nero's adoptive father, the Emperor Claudius, who in AD 42 began the works for the new harbor of Rome, named Portus. Portus is thus the emperor represented on the so-called Ostia Sesterces. And the ruins of this majestic harbor are still visible today. A key to the understanding of the nature of the message propagated by this coin lays perhaps in the cargo ship, called Navis Oneraria in Latin, in the center of the reverse. These ships were used for the transportation of grain. We should thus consider the possibility that Nero wanted to propagate a more general message regarding security, especially related to the secure passage of grain to Rome. The element of the food security deriving from the harbor is further strengthened by the detailed representation of the portico buildings enclosing the water basin and protecting the ships. However, no real security and well-being is possible without divine support. The element in the composition that most self-evidently represents the team of divine benevolent presence is the reclining godlike figure at the bottom, which is depicted at a much larger scale than all other ships. The same thing happens for the Torlonia relief, a third century AD relief, depicting a similar harbor scene with a benevolent deity overlooking it. The divine figure on the Torlonia relief could be safely identified as Neptune because he's holding a trident, but the deity represented on the Ostia Sesterces lacks the trident. The figure should probably be interpreted as the god of the harbor, as it is visible on a coin of Soli Pompeiopolis issued by Antoninus Pius. Appropriately, the harbor god on Ostia Sesterces is represented with a rudder usually carried by the river gods and a dolphin, usually associated with the sea god Neptune. Indeed, the harbor is the place where sea and rivers come together. On the opposite side of the harbor is recognizable the lighthouse built by the emperor Claudius. The statues on top is most likely the one of Claudius, whom Nero made a god after his death, but allegedly despised. However, the powerful representation of the deified Claudius protecting, together with the harbor god, the safe arrival of the great Rome, and ultimately the well-being of the eternal city, seems to defy the accounts made by contemporary historians the same ones who depicted Nero as a monster. As far as this coin is concerned, Nero presents himself as a God-fearing and father-loving emperor, primarily interested in the well-being of his people. There is thus more to Nero than what has been presented by historiography, and this beautiful coin is a testament to the complexity of this famed historical figure. This is why this is one of our greatest coins. Thank you. This lecture has been made available to you courtesy of the American Numismatic Society. Since 1858, the ANS has supported research and education in numismatics and the history of money. With a collection of over 800,000 objects, an extensive library, a dynamic publishing arm, and ever-improving online research resources, we have become one of the largest numismatic institutions in the world. If you wish to support the ANS and the work we do, 
You can join as a member and become a part of this historic community. Go to numismatics.org membership to see options and prices.